Here's the intro. Frogger, or as a lot of us know it as, Frogger He's Back, was a game released in 1997 for PlayStation and PC, and a couple of years later across other game systems. It's also a game that I've reviewed a couple of times, and it's just one in general that I'll probably never stop talking about. I'll be taking a look at the PlayStation version because that's the one I'm most familiar with. And I mean, I, I probably did put it in the title, so I'm, you know. I really love this intro. It's it's so charming and kind of kind of shows off some of the stuff that I think Frogger probably should have been able to do in the game. But you know, it, it's it's fine. Oh, and here we have the leaderboards on uh, scoreboard. So let us get started with the retro levels. The retro levels of this game are set up like the original Frogger, just with a zoomed in camera and, and 3D graphics and uh, quite a bit of changes. But for the most part, it's set up like the original Frogger. It's generally an easy way to show off how the game's going to play, for the most part. The basic controls, at least. This game is set up differently from the older ones in the fact that instead of guiding different frogs to their different homes, you actually have to save five different baby frogs per level. Each frog has different colors, green, orange, purple, blue, and red. Who, who's, who says Frogger doesn't have diversity? The retro levels are also like the original Frogger in the fact that each level is basically the same level, just slightly harder, and, well in this case, for some reason the water is slightly darker blue. Level 5 is the last of the retro levels, and, well, other than being the hardest one, there's also a little surprise here. That's right, a yellow fro a golden frog. I'll talk more about those in a bit. Another thing you can do in the game is change the camera angle, which, uh, well, means you change the camera angle. It really doesn't have that much use in the retro levels, but uh, it does work out later on. Moving on from the retro levels, let's take a look at the, well, I guess the lily pad levels. Wow, the loading screens really aren't that long. I mean, I know the game is loading up just, uh, well, the graphics are kind of the basic concept of polygons, but you get what I'm saying, it's it's not that long. As you can tell, the lily pad levels are a lot different from the retro levels, and this is how the whole game is going to be. It's different from the retro levels. Definitely more variety and encourages more exploration. I wonder what will happen if I go up here and, like, jump down this hill. I bet it'll, like, roll off or something. It'll be pretty funny. Let's see here, just, uh... Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh shoot, it killed me. You get introduced to new power-ups in the form of flies, like this auto-hop here. You also have these types of flies, the rainbowy ones that give you one-ups. I mean, I'm already full on that, but you get the idea. For some reason, you can only have a maximum of 11 extra lives. I guess this is just to add challenge, but trust me, whenever we get to the later levels, you're gonna wish there was more. Another thing that's different from the retro levels is the fact that the next level is completely different in design. This is actually how it is throughout the rest of the game. Very different levels that will definitely take a lot of trial and error if you don't know these levels. And let me just go ahead and say, if you don't know the lawnmower level very well, then it is going to be complete hell for you. For some, it might get a little satisfying once you know the timing of all the jumps, but for others, it might feel like something they really don't want to do anymore. Now, some later levels in different worlds will have very similar structures to the first level, just with some slight differences. In the case of the last lily pad level, it's like the second level, only a lot harder, and with this little added section, which can make it slightly easier for this level. Now let's move on to the leaf levels, because I guess I just feel like showing you every world. I decided to go exploring a little more, other than just looking for the frogs, but really all it does is get you potentially more points. This level is actually pretty easy once you figure it out. I mean, it can be a little intimidating at first with all the hell storm of bees, but if you're quick enough, it's really not that bad. Now you may have noticed whenever you start a level or whenever you die and you spawn back to the beginning, it kind of shows Frogger's face and then it turns for you to go forward or sideways. Well, for some weird reason, Canopy Capers is the only one where it's the opposite. It doesn't really change many things, it's just kind of weird. One thing that's also a little bit strange about the leaf levels is the, well, the fact that that happened. But also the fact that this only has two levels. Most of the worlds have about three to five, but this one's different. Now we're off to the Metal Gear levels. Heh. 
These levels introduce kind of a puzzle element where you have to turn on these switches to move these platforms, or turn them off depending on what you want to do. The levels at first kind of look like they're hard, but honestly once you get to know them, they are pretty easy. Well now this one's a little more... harder. But again, it's really not that hard. What are you, suicidal frogger? You just have to be careful with your jumps, because sometimes you can go so fast that you can jump over the stupid frog. Alright, I'll go ahead and address the elephant in the room, and by that I mean the cheat I'm using. You may have noticed that I've been losing some lives and not really losing any lives. That's because I put in a cheat code that gives me infinite lives, something I didn't realize was a thing until over 20 years later. That could have could have saved me a few headaches, but you know, it made me a little stronger. The green frog in this level definitely takes a long time to figure out how to get, but once you figure it out, it's pretty satisfying. Now on to the bat slash cave levels. Oh by the way, this is something you unlock with the gold frog, I probably should have mentioned that earlier. Now this level utilizes the, you know what, the lighting in the background is kind of uh, distracting. Let me, let me change that. Now this level utilizes the lighting in the, well mostly the darkness, so you really have to know the level to get through it, and eat these little light flies. It's really not hard at all, it's just the darkness that makes it a little bit, you know, harder. Frogger goes skiing on the other hand. Oh boy. You're given plenty of light at the start, but then it just gets dimmer. Not as dim as the previous level, but the fact that you're skating and constantly going really makes it harder. You also get to check out Frogger's teeth in this level, which is, uh, that's pretty nice. I also find it kind of slightly funny, a uh, slightly funny, the way Frogger looks when he ties on the ice. Now Webb's Cavern, it's not too bad. I mean, look at all that light there. Surely it won't get too dark. Come on, you knew the opposite was going to happen. Something I've been neglecting to mention is the fact that you can croak to hear where the other frogs are, kind of in the surrounding area. This is what the gold frog sounds like. And these are what the regular baby frogs sound like. I wonder what the seizure one is doing. Whoa! Okay, that's good. Now we move on to the cloud levels. These will be so relaxing with loony balloons. Yes, just peace, tranquility, and so much damn annoyance from the birds. Seriously though, these levels can be really hard at times and, well, you gotta have a lot of patience while also being really quick with the timer. This level also shows off that not everything that's supposed to work, works. This isn't really a great example right here, but you get what I'm saying. Now this level... <laughs> if you don't know what to do here, you are not going to be getting any frogs. Alright, speeding through, speeding through, we're getting through this. Let's go low. Crap. What you have to do is pop this balloon and ride the bo What you're supposed to do is pop this balloon and then ride these birds. Now at first it looks like they're just going around in circles, but then eventually you find out that they're getting closer and closer to the clouds below that have the frogs. It's an interesting idea, but it gets old really fast and just kind of wastes time. The next level is basically the same as the first level, except it's more of a sunset look and obviously it's harder. Now this level uses both the ice physics and the planes, I guess. Yeah, instead of birds, you have planes and helicopters. Oh, shoot. It's challenging, but honestly kind of fun. In some areas. But don't worry, there are still birds here that just try to kill you. So now that we're done with the beautiful skies, why don't we take a look into the sewers? The levels definitely get harder from here, but if you know this level, then it's not too bad. You just have to make it past these barrels and then make it to the other side and try to find the frogs from there. In case you're worried about time, well, there's plenty of time flies around. Now the next level is definitely different. Well, not quite like the cave ice level, it's definitely a place where you can't really sit still a lot. Well, I mean, you can't do that anyway due to the timer, but you get what I'm saying. Just a, just a good old classic nasty ass place. This level right here can make me pretty cranky. This is definitely one of the hardest levels in the game. Not THE hardest, but it does have moments where you want to pull your hair out. The next level is just a harder version of the first level, and it always seems like the third or fourth level is like that. To be honest, this one might be harder than the previous level. Well, honestly, it's just harder in a different way. 
Now this level, ooh, dear lord, god in heaven, uh, it's, it's quite a bit harder. But if you can reach this spot, it's definitely got a fun moment like this. Although, this still isn't really the hardest level, if you can believe that. Now we're getting really close to the last world, but first we're going to go through the desert world. These buffaloes are essentially the cars, except they have hardly any pattern, and it's really hard to tell what that pattern is if there is a pattern. How many times can I say pattern? Yeah, this is definitely the hardest set of levels in the game. So if you wanted this game to be any harder than it already was, well, play these levels. Especially this one. You ever wanted to have a nightmare and have your hair torn out and having to go to therapy and everything? Well, here you go. This is this is a level for you. These stupid freaking beetles. They can just go right to hell where they back where they came from. The other parts are hard too, but it's because of the beetles that waste your time and so you have to be even quicker. You're more on edge whenever you get to these parts. So yeah, this is one of the most frustratingly hard levels in the game, but believe it or not, this is still not the hardest one in the game. This level is still challenging, but it's probably the easiest level in the set of desert levels. And of course, the fourth level is just a harder version of the first level, but luckily here's where the gold frog is. Why do I say luckily for this level? Well, it's because of what the next level is. That's right, it's the hardest level in the game, and of course, it is a harder version of the second level. Out of the entirety of the currently 23 years this game has been around, I have only beaten this level once, and it was not here. Even with cheats, this level is near impossible. Here's where you can leave your initials for the scoreboard. But hey, look at that. I reached the top of the scoreboard. Oh, and this is back when this was going to be a Danny Tree Frog episode. And finally, we have Tropical Trouble, the last world slash level in the game. Yeah, there's only one level. While this level ain't exactly a cakewalk, it's actually one of the easiest levels in the game. Once you know it, of course. Maybe they just wanted to give you a relaxing time after the previous level, which is, uh, well, let's just not even talk about it. Well, that was the final frog. Now we've beaten the game. So I guess now we'll, uh, what now? That's right, there's still a little bit more to do in this level. The timer even stopped, so it just kind of lets you explore around before you do it. Which is what I did, I just decided to... Also turn on infinite lives and explore around and see what the level has to offer. But once I was done with that, I decided to go into this frog temple thing. And you know all those gold frogs I've been collecting? That's right, they all appear here and once you get them all, this happens. Just wanted to get creative with speeding it up. You know, I really don't care if that's the third time I've shown that in terms of a, of a review show. It's just so beautiful. Anyway, now we're letting the credits roll, showing off early versions of these levels, early and unfinished. That's interesting. 
Well, that was Frogger He's Back on PlayStation. It's not the most polished game out there, and it's not exactly everyone's cup of tea, but I still really enjoy it. Nostalgia probably has a hand in that, but I think that some people would give it, if they gave it more of a chance, they would enjoy it. Somewhat. Maybe. I don't know. Bottom line is, I really like this game. Well, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed, and uh, I don't know if I'm going to change the way the backgrounds are. I just kind of slapped this stuff together for this new review show. This fifth new review show. Uh, as of this recording, it's new, obviously. So anyway, I don't know if I'm going to change stuff, but we shall see what we shall see. Uh, apparently my grandma used to say that. Anyway, thanks for watching.